And one last uh, important thing about polynomials that I want to talk about is something called end behavior. So end behavior, um, as its name kind of implies, refers to what happens to a polynomial function um, toward uh, either end of it. So when x gets really small, like when it gets uh, towards negative infinity, or when it gets really big, when it gets towards positive infinity. Um, so we can look at linear and quadratic functions as kind of a model um, of end behavior. So we'll look at four uh, different examples. So we'll look at the example um, y equals x and y equals negative x. Um, and we'll look also at y equals x squared and y equals minus x squared. Um, so the graph of y equals x, as you guys hopefully remember, um, looks like this. Um, just looks like a straight line going through the origin um, like that. Um, y equals negative x. It's a very similar looking graph. Um, but instead of going through the third and first quadrant, it goes through the second and the fourth quadrant. It's almost reflected like that. Um, and y equals x squared, remember, is this sort of parabola centered at the origin. And y equals minus x squared is also a parabola centered at the origin. It just opens down instead of up. It's concave down, not concave up. Um, so why did I draw these four uh, sketches? Um, well, the reason is these um, four polynomial functions, they are polynomials even though they're really simple, um, kind of give us a template for all of the possible end behaviors um, that any polynomial function can have. So here on this side we have um, polynomials of odd degree and even degree with a positive leading coefficient. Here we have polynomials of odd degree and even degree with a negative leading coefficient. Um, so in this case, um, as x goes to negative infinity, okay, y goes to negative infinity, and as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. So that's how we write the end behavior. We say as x goes to either negative infinity or positive infinity, we talk about what, what happens to y. Does it go to negative infinity or does it go to positive infinity? So here, as you can see, as x gets smaller and smaller, as we go towards negative infinity, our graph gets lower and lower. It also goes towards negative infinity and kind of vice versa for positive infinity. Um, then looking here, you can kind of see that no matter what, even if you go toward negative infinity, you're still going towards positive infinity. So um, we'll write as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to infinity, and as x goes to infinity, y also goes to infinity. And over here, everything is kind of uh, swapped. So that basically the signs um, of, the, of the y value are swapped. So in this case, as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to infinity. And as x goes to infinity, y goes to negative infinity. So notice the signs on the y are kind of swapped. So here we had negative, positive. Here we have positive, negative. They're swapped basically by this negative sign. And a very similar idea here. As x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. And as x goes to infinity, y also goes towards uh, negative infinity. Okay, so any polynomial, no matter what, no matter how many terms it has, um, whatever degree it has and whatever sign it has in the leading coefficient, that determines the end behavior. And its end behavior is always going to fall into one of these four categories. So what happens in between is different. So as a function has a higher and higher degree, it can have more and more movement in between. Um, but what happens at these sort of endpoints or the theoretical endpoints as you get closer to negative and positive infinity, um, that's determined really exclusively by the sign of the leading coefficient and by the degree of the polynomial itself. So here's an example for 
um, you know, for odd degree, positive leading coefficient, even degree, positive leading coefficient, odd degree, negative leading coefficient, and odd uh, and an even degree, negative leading coefficient.